Coming up on Mountain News this morning, a church in our region brings back an annual Christmas tradition, inviting people to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ with a special recreation. And the city of Whitesburg plans to celebrate the holidays by letting people do some local shopping right on Main Street, no matter rain or shine. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. All righty, y'all. 631 on this Friday morning. Uh, you know what? I love a good I love a good Friday. You know, hey, we made it to the end of the work week. It's the weekend. I'm off. Y'all are probably off. Brandon's off. Everybody's off. Let's head over to Brandon this morning. And actually, I'm not off. I'm on call. So. Yep. So and then, of course, you know, we got Mountain Classic That's going true. on this weekend. So there's we, a lot of things to do this. Well, weekend. Steve is the manager on call. And so I always tell him, don't call me. <laughs> I'm your last option. Last do option not call for, me. for calling. No, he'll have to call me, but I, I won't answer. I understand. Uh, I understand. Ignore. All right, let's take a look at our conditions this morning as we head out the door. Doing a little bit of work, uh, multitasking over here this morning. But you see dense fog is the name of the game as you're heading out there this morning. Low visibility in a lot of areas. But again, I love, I'm going to circle it for you because I, I just think this is kind of funny. you got all this dense fog, and then all of a sudden you got basically no fog right here in this little area right there. So again, we're kind of watching that for you there. But regardless, be careful. Give yourself plenty of time. Let's go to UVA Wise. And yep, it's a fog in over there. You can see no visibility. And that's actually working this morning because usually if it goes, if it glitches out, you don't see the little text at the bottom. So yeah, that's absolutely working. Dense fog over that way, 46. 48 Clintwood, 48 Jackson, 48 London, Somerset, 47 Irvin, 54 Harlan, 45 Moorhead and Ashland this morning, 50 in Jacksboro and Williamsburg, along with Jonesville across the state and region. 53 Myrtle Beach, Atlanta, warmer than Myrtle Beach this morning. 64 there, Huntsville, Alabama, 54 Memphis, 49 St. Louis, 40 in Indianapolis, 38 Columbus, and 30 in Pittsburgh this morning. Breakfast forecast, we're going to see not that cool of temperatures, but cooler temperatures we've been used to, but still not too bad. 40s for most of us as we head through the morning and into the afternoon, back toward the 60-degree mark. Dakota? All right, Brendan, thank you. The Williamsburg Police Department is investigating an assault case. Police say they responded to Mount Morgan Apartments on Tuesday for a domestic violence call. Now, when they arrived, officers arrested 23-year-old Dylan Jarvis after they say he assaulted a woman with a knife. Police say the woman had minor injuries. Two juveniles were inside the apartment at the time. Jarvis is facing several charges, including assault and alcohol intoxication. Well, we've been following reports of the man known as the bogus beggar being spotted here in eastern Kentucky. Pikeville police told us they received complaints about the man on Wednesday. They were able to talk with him and believe he is the bogus beggar. However, officers said they think he is out of, out of Pikeville right now. The bogus beggar, whose real name is Gary Thompson, has a long history here in the Commonwealth. Our sister station, Wave News in Louisville, has followed Thompson's story for several years. You can see its reporting on WYMT.com. Well, as the number of people diagnosed with autism continues to grow, advocates say the availability of services is not keeping up. The diagnosis across the country is close to three times more common than it was just 20 years ago. Yet parents of children with autism in eastern Kentucky tell us they still often feel alone. Garrett Weimer shows us how grassroots support groups are trying to bridge the great health divide for kids with special needs. Inside Kreider's Barber Shop in Prestonsburg, Scorilla. the buzz never stops. Yeah, we're steady. But as a parent of two autistic children, Chris Kreider knows it can be hard to handle for some who sit in his chair. They deserve to have a good haircut too, just like everybody else. Um, they just have issues that, sensory issues that you have to work through. Kreider's Barbershop is one of the first businesses in Floyd County to be certified autism friendly. Well, I think a lot of people and a lot of businesses uh, it's just more about awareness than anything else. One group in particular is encouraging other businesses to go through the training too, part of an effort to make Eastern Kentucky more welcoming to the growing number of kids with special needs. It's not about getting him just help, it's about his survival. Kelly Jo Blair lives in Martin County. She founded a support group in 2016 after her son Cage was diagnosed and she didn't know where to turn. I found myself um, messaging complete strangers, asking like, what do I do? What, you know, what resources are out there? 
and quickly I found there was next to none. Since then, she's learned she's far from alone. Their group's Facebook following has grown to 1,100 members. They try to help each other and point to resources. Knowing to reach autism services, many families in Appalachia have to move, drive miles and miles, or wait for years. You live your life on a wait list, whether it's a Medicaid waiver wait list or a therapy wait list. That's how it is. Back in October, Pikeville Medical Center opened a new Appalachian Valley Autism Center in Prestonsburg. The original facility in Pikeville was the first of its kind in the region. We've had a four-year-old, a five-year-old, seven-year-old say their very first words. To see a father drop down to their knees in tears and say, I never thought I would hear my child say I love you. Wow, you can't help but get emotional. Even as officials cut the ribbon on the new campus, they said more than 500 children were still on its waiting list. Eastern Kentucky needs resources for these children. Not just autistic children, special needs children in general are underserved. That's why this grassroots group is trying to bridge the gap, being there for each other, hosting inclusive events, and seeking change in their communities. Give our kids a spot, give them a chance to succeed. At his shop, Chris Kreider says they figured out some ways to make kids more comfortable with a haircut. A lot of it is time with these kids. They, you can do a little bit and let them gain, regain their bearings about themselves and, and finding something to distract them. Their car chair, iPads, letting kids hold the clippers. The big thing with them is getting over the fear of it being close to their ears and stuff like that. That's a huge part of them. And it's important to Kreider, too, a responsibility he doesn't take lightly, knowing some parents drive from an hour or two away to come here. I mean, something as simple as a haircut uh, for a parent and seeing them smile, something they haven't got in a long time, uh, means the world to us. A sign that, a little at a time, these parents are making a difference. In Prestonsburg, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. As more insurance companies and, and Medicaid move to cover more autism services, advocates hope more autism centers will come to eastern Kentucky. Blair says she tells anyone she knows who's going to college to become speech, feeding, occupational, or ABA therapist and come back to the region. Well, first responders in Pikeville made a donation on Wednesday to help out kids across Pike County. The Pikeville First Responders Community Outreach Program, which consists of the town's police, fire, EMS, and dispatch center, donated $500 to every school in the county, totaling $10,500 worth of needed supplies. Dorton Elementary School Family Resource Coordinator Alicia Hurley says, uh, without support of the community, providing for children in need may not be possible. Without our community partners, we can't do anything. We can't do our jobs. Our jobs would be very basic and very unrewarding. And the fact that they help us the way they do, it makes our jobs that much more rewarding. Hurley says this donation cannot have come at a better time, and all of Pike County's Family Resource Coordinators are extremely grateful. Faith Assembly of God Church in London once again created a live nativity scene where locals can drive through and experience a portrayal of where Jesus was born. Church members and staff have been hard at work since Black Friday to put out to put together what looks like an old town being behind the church building. Well, the pastor says they are hoping to bring a little light to locals this holiday season. You know, this is like Emmanuel, God with us. You know, this is the message of hope. You know, this is the greatest gift that we have. And so, uh, so we do. We do it well, and uh, we love for everybody to come out and join us and see it. And uh, that way they can have a little bit of hope during Christmas as well. The live nativity scene will be open once again tonight at 6.30 and on Saturday. Welcome rain or shine, the city of Whitesburg will host its miracle on Main Street today. It kicks off with the mistletoe market. Local vendors will line Main Street or set up inside some of the businesses downtown. The market is from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. and the city is encouraging people to shop locally this year. There's a renewed hope. Uh, people are rebuilding, and it's, uh, it's a wonderful time to be part of the city of Whitesburg. The city's Christmas parade kicks off this evening at 6, and will also be, uh, it will also be downtown, and Kane Kitchen will have a free community dinner after the parade. 
A UPS delivery driver who went viral for his reaction thanking homeowners for leaving out snacks had a chance to thank the couple in person. Dorian Young was dropping off a package at the Barnett's house in Louisville only to be greeted by free snacks left as a thank you. So he decided to make an extra special delivery to reunite with the family and return the favor. This house has the best snacks. Yeah, they have a cornucopia of great stuff. Like, you know, like I love coming here and this is my favorite route for sure. The reactions I get from the snack card, that is by far the best one. He is just full of excitement and yeah, energy. Yeah, he's a character. Yeah. <laughs> he's so animated. It just, you know, whenever she showed it to me, I was like, oh, this guy is hilarious. Yeah. So she posted it and then, you know, the next thing you know, it just blew up. Yeah. Well, the Barnets say they started putting snacks out during the pandemic to thank drivers for their hard work, and they just kept it doing it. Tis the season for snacks. All right, let's get out there and talk about the temperatures this morning. We're going to be on the cooler side today. 40s to the north, 50s to the south. you got to get close to the border there to find some low to mid 50s. 54 in Harlan. Again, the second day in a row, warm spot. 45 in Moorhead and Ashland are cool spots this morning. Your out the door forecast. Fog is going to be an issue for some. Mist is going to be an issue for some. Mainly cloudy skies today, but some rain chances could return a little bit later. But we're going to be close to 60 degrees for a daytime high. I guess that'll make up for the fact that it's going to be gloomy basically all day long. Dakota? All right, Brandon, thank you so much. 642 still to come here on Mountain News this morning. Hospitals across the U.S. continue to experience a shortage of beds as the triple demic keeps its hold on the population. Stay with us.